Hi Dex, it's so good to be with you in your field. Uh, do you want to just introduce yourself to the viewers? Yeah, well, my name is Dixon Shuali from Maperera, the lower Shire of Malawi. Um, I've been, I was born here and I've been staying here for all the years. How many years have you been doing farming God's Way on this particular field? I've been doing farming God's Way here for the past 18 years. 18 years? Absolutely, That's 18 years. Right? So Dixon, I know we're standing in your sesame portion here of this field. Um, how important is rotations to you? Uh, do you feel like it's a significant part of Farming God's Way in the master plan? Absolutely it is. Uh, you know for the first four years I was not convinced, I was not fully persuaded uh, to do crop rotation here. But since I got engaged and started doing crop rotation I've seen so much uh, benefits and, uh, and I was getting so much profit because uh, like uh, the rotation crop I was selling it at a higher price. It also has been uh, improving the soil structure and also the risk uh, spreading the risk of the financial loss from this field. And breaking disease cycles too. Eh? Absolutely. What I was seeing like every year, uh, the, the disease which used to attack the maize was not there when I planted the maize, where I planted uh, the uh, rotation crop previously. So you've been doing rotations here for 14 years effectively now? Absolutely, for 14 years oh, now. That's fantastic. Eh? Great. Uh, very good. I think you've got a very powerful testimony of the first year that you practiced a rotation when you actually grew cotton, I think, in this portion behind me here. Yeah? Yes. Do you want to share with the viewers uh, that particular testimony and how powerful and impactful that was in your lives and livelihood as a family? You know, that uh, fifth year uh, of doing farming goats way, well, it was actually my first year of doing crop rotation, uh, whereby everybody grew maize and uh, like we had like that bumper harvest of the maize in this region and the price of the maize went absolutely down and uh, the cotton price went so high. So like from just one third of my, uh, my whole field, I, I, I actually made more profit than two thirds of, of the whole field. Yes, and that's a maize. very significant advantage in being able to spread our risk uh, with alternative crops in the mixture. Um, there's one more aspect that you build into your farm plan and that is by planting a relay crop and you particularly in this area you grow Nondolo, which is yes. obviously uh, pigeon peas. <laughs> pigeon peas. I'll just share a little bit about that and how much it adds into the biodiversity of your field, but also into the sustainable profitability side of this field. Yeah, I mean, on, the, on, on that light, I mean, I've been uh, planting uh, pigeon peas as a relay crop now for like 14 years. Uh, I've been doing that. The first thing is uh, the advantages is like I get an extra crop from one season and also it has been protecting my blanket you know we have got this communal grazing here yes. whereby you are allowed to protect your field when it's green yes. so once i harvest my maize knock down the stalks and it's like open to everyone and all the headsmen will come and graze their animals here so once i have the uh, i mean the relay crop and the, my field will be uh, protected from from those animals and also getting an extra crop it's like giving me more extra uh, so, profit so plant your uh, pigeon peas at senescence in the maize crop, which is probably early February, right? Yeah, it depends what, what, what time I, I plant in. If, I, if we plant uh, by the end of November, then we, we might be planting a relay crop uh, uh, early February or mid-February as well. Uh, but more especially, we, we plant uh, this relay crop at the die back, I know where the maize leaves are. So there's no to die competition back. between they, absolutely that, that growing a pigeon pea and the maize plant. Absolutely, there's important. no competition, like uh, by then it's like maize plant is almost done. Yes. So there's no competition. Oh, very good. And yeah. then you would knock the stalks down and the pigeon peas will be, at what sort of height would they be? As yeah. post harvest stalk lodging, around about? By then, the uh, uh, just above the knee high. Okay. Uh, then I knock down the stalks, then it will be or exposed to the light and the air and that and it will be growing fast okay. and health as well. And then at which point would you typically harvest those pigeon peas? Uh, the pigeon peas will, will, will be harvesting them from August, September, October, the three months. Okay. It's going to be harvesting. So you get a second crop out of the field. That's uh, the second crop uh, from no one rain, season. No rain. With no rain. Amazing. I mean, no impulse. And that's been also uh, providing um, fertility back into the soil as well. Mm -hmm. 
So everybody, the third uh, technology key in farming God's way is to practice biodiversity. And so we practice these uh, principles of biodiversity through practicing rotations, rotations within rotations, integrate um, relay crops into our master design, uh, bring compost in, bringing soil biodiversity in. So practice biodiversity it really has significant benefits. A lot of people are reticent to engage in this aspect of the farming God's way keys, but you can do it. And Dixon's doing it exceptionally well and seeing the fruit of that. Yes. Thank you so much, Dixon. Welcome. It's my pleasure. Thanks for coming to my field. God bless you, brother. You likewise. You